Oh yeah, get out your dance shoes. It's time to learn with Taylor Swift's hit song, Shake It Off. So catchy songs like this one are an absolutely fantastic resource for you to improve your English fluency. Plus, we will be explaining to you all of the most important native slang and pronunciation. If you want to be able to understand natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss a single one of our new lessons. I stay out too late. Got nothing in my brain. Stay out too late. Informally speaking, to stay out is to go out and stay away from home, especially at night. If you stay out too late, you are going out and not coming back until it's very late at night. Got nothing in my brain. The brain is the organ in your head. This could be an insult meaning that someone is stupid or that they don't know anything. Also notice that this is a grammatical error. It should be, I have got nothing in my brain. However, as we see here, it is common for natives to bend the language and break the grammar rules. Got nothing in my brain. 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 That's what people say. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. I go on too many dates. <laughs> go on too many dates. A date is a meeting with a person with a romantic intention. So to go on a date is to go to a movie, have dinner, etc. with someone you are romantically interested in. Example, he went on a date with someone he met in class. The word date can also be used to describe the person you are meeting. Example, his date showed up late, but they ended up having a great time. But I can't make them stay. But I can't make them stay. But I can't make them stay. But I can't make them stay At least that's what people say mm -mm. That's what people say mm -mm. But I keep cruising Can't stop, won't stop moving it's Keep cruising Literally, the verb to cruise refers to the action of sailing about in an area without a precise destination, especially for pleasure. We can also use it as a noun, take a cruise. In the song, Taylor makes a more informal use of the word as a slang expression, which means to walk or drive around with no clear destination at a low speed. Example, want to take a cruise with me down to the park later? It's like I got this music in my mind saying it's gonna be all right. Cause the player's gonna play, 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 play. Players gonna play. The idea that the chorus is conveying is that no matter what, people are going to behave according to their values. Taylor is basically saying that people won't change. In this context, Taylor refers to a different kind of player. As a slang word, a player is someone who tricks people, most often a man who is very good at making women like him. The problem with players, as Taylor suggests here, is that they make women feel like they are romantically interested when really they are only interested in sex. She's saying that players are just going to play and you can't expect them to want to commit to a more serious relationship. Haters gonna hate. In this line, you are already familiar with the word hate as the opposite of love. But to hate is also often used with a different connotation, often as the phrasal verb to hate on something or someone, which is to criticize and be hard towards someone because you don't like them and not because of any reasonable justification. People who hate on other people are called haters. Example, she's a controversial celebrity. She has many fans and many haters. When she uploaded a video of herself singing, a lot of people hated on her in the comments. I told her not to listen to the haters. Learning English with fast songs like Shake It Off is a lot of fun, but it can be kind of difficult to understand without a native's help sometimes, right? That's why we created our free three-part mini course teaching you English with a popular TV series friends so that you can understand your favorite movies, TV series, and even music. Click up here or down in the description box below to learn more. Shake, 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 shake,
shake it off. As a slang phrasal verb, to shake something off means to forget about someone or something, to let go, to get over it, to move on. You can shake off someone who's annoying or upsetting you. Example, what can I do to shake him off? It also means to free oneself of something, to get rid of something. Example, I shook off my fear of rejection and asked her out on a date. However, there is a double meaning here. Shake it can mean to dance as a command. Example, the music at this club is great, let's shake it. As we see in the music video, Taylor and others are using dance and music to shake off or forget about their problems. Pronunciation though. The glottal T or stop T in American English. When a word ends in T, that final T sound is cut off by the back of the throat. So instead of cat, peat, what, we get cat, peat, what. While many English learners mistakenly think that natives just omit the T sound, in fact, there is a subtle sound created by the air being stopped at the back of the mouth. Let's compare. I will emphasize the glottal T sound. Can't, can. P, P. Wait, way. No, no. The glottal T makes the word sound shorter, while you probably hear a longer vowel sound in the words without the T. However, usually if the word following a glottal T begins with a vowel sound, it morphs into a D sound, often called an American T. For example, cat and dog, Pete is there, wait a minute, shake it off. That's right, normally we would link it and off and transform the T of it into a D sound. However, if we listen in the song, Taylor uses two glottal T sounds instead. This is because while off is a function word that would normally reduce, she emphasizes and fully enunciates it. Therefore, it and off do not link. If you don't know about content and function words, I highly recommend you watch the video at the top. Listen to that one more time. As I mentioned with the grammatical note, it's not important that you speak like this. The important thing is that you speak clearly so people can understand you. However, I recommend you pay attention to the fascinating pronunciation of T in your favorite songs and TV series. Heartbreaker's gonna break, faker's gonna fake. A heartbreaker is someone who breaks another person's heart which, when you are in a relationship, means to do something that shows that you don't love the other person or to betray their trust in some way. Example, Travis broke her heart by cheating on her, but she eventually forgave him. With the verb break here, she obviously means break people's hearts. Lastly, to fake means to make something seem real in order to deceive people. For example, someone might fake being another person, an employee might fake being ill to skip a day at work, in a relationship, someone might fake loving the other person. With this verb, we can also add ER to get the noun faker. ER is a suffix we use to turn some verbs and nouns into the doer of the action. For example, football and footballer. As you might imagine, a faker is an ingenuous person who pretends to be things they aren't or have things they don't in order to receive liking and praise of other people. By the way, notice that as with I got nothing in my brain, in these four lines to be grammatically correct, we should use an auxiliary verb, in this case, are. However, this is another collocation where natives often leave off the auxiliary verb. Example, you gonna take out the trash? Unless your English is very advanced, I don't recommend you attempt to speak like this, but it is good to pay attention to it in native media. Pronunciation note. Notice how Taylor pronounced these words, players, haters, heartbreaker, faker. She uses a very soft, subtle R sound, so they sound like playa, hata, heartbreaka, and faka. This is very similar to what happens in another song we taught a lesson with. Check out this explanation from Sucker by the Jonas Brothers. 
pronunciation though. By the way, notice that in the song, sucker is pronounced without the typical strong American R at the end. I'm a sucker for you. The Jonas Brothers are American, and although pronouncing the R at the end of a word in this way, silently, with a long vowel, is more typical of British English, there are rare times that we do it in American English, particularly when people speak colloquially and with slang. Practice your English. The best way to remember new vocabulary is to use it right away. So create an example using these words, player, hater, heartbreaker, and faker, down in the comments below and see what other learners said. Not miss a beat. When we say that someone does not miss a beat, we mean that that person doesn't slow down, pause, or hesitate when faced with a difficult situation. Example, he did not miss a beat when they asked him about his arrest. You don't miss a beat when, to the surprise of everyone, you do something really well. Example, wow, great moves and coordination. You girls didn't miss a beat. He didn't miss a beat under pressure and scored the winning point. A meaning that's usually assigned to the idea of missing a beat is that you do it out of embarrassment or confusion. You don't miss a beat if you're asked an embarrassing question and you answer it without getting nervous or hesitating. Example, during the job interview, she was asked a weird question, but she didn't miss a beat and her answer was perfect. This is not a super common expression, but Taylor probably chose it to stay with the theme of dancing and singing away her problems because the literal meaning of this expression alludes to singing and being able to stay on beat and not miss the rhythm of the song. Example, even though she did a lot of dancing moves, she did not miss a beat. I'm lightning on my feet. Lightning is the phenomenon seen in this image. We can use it metaphorically to say that someone or something is very fast. Example, the dog chased the ball like lightning. Similar to the last expression, she probably uses this to both figuratively say that she is fast to react and literally that she is a graceful dancer. If you're a music lover, you definitely want to check out our playlist with all of our lessons with songs by clicking right up here or down in the description box below. I'm dancing on my own. On one's own means without anyone's help. In this case, it could mean alone or by herself. Example, her three-year-old son can already read his favorite book on his own. I'll make the moves up as I go. Make up means to quickly think up something in the moment. Many English learners mistakenly overuse the word invent instead of make up. However, in English, invent usually refers to creating something physical that did not exist before. Example, the scientists invented a new tool to help surgeons. You could think that moves and movement are the same thing, but a move generally requires skill and grace to perform, like the skillful moves you see Ronaldo do in the field or LeBron James do on the NBA court. Moves are also your dancing moves, as you see plenty of in this video. Taylor makes up her dancing moves as she goes. This means she creates her moves as she is doing them in the moment. Example, we don't have anything planned for our trip. We're gonna decide what places to visit and activities to do as we go. A similar and common expression is to play it by ear. Example, I don't have anything planned for this weekend. I prefer to play it by ear and see what kind of adventures I can find. Once again, she probably also means figuratively that she reacts quickly and creatively. But I keep cruising, can't stop, won't stop grooving. A groove is a thin line cut into a hard surface, like the grooves in a vinyl disc. Also, the groove is the beat of a piece of music, so you could describe a nice song as groovy. Example, that song is so groovy, 
As slang, groove means to dance, which is what Taylor most likely means here. Getting down and out. To get down is to start feeling sad. Taylor here describes getting down because of liars and cheats, referring to the players, haters, heartbreakers, and fakers. She might also be talking about cheaters, that's to say, someone who cheats on his or her partner. Here, out is just used to further emphasize the phrase. If someone is down and out, it means that they are without money, a job, or a place to work. Example, he's been down and out ever since the big financial crisis. Calling someone or someone's actions dirty means that they are unjust, lacking in good values like honesty or integrity. Example, those car salesmen use dirty tactics to sell horrible cars to unsuspecting customers. Taylor here very creatively makes a play on words with get down. The first time she says it, she alludes to the meaning of getting sad, but when she says get down to the sick beat, she uses another meaning of get down which means to dance energetically. Sick in this context is a slang meaning great, awesome. A beat in this case is the rhythm of a song. Example, let's go over there and get down on the dance floor. Wow, Drake's new song is sick, let's get down. Sick beats. My ex-man brought his new girlfriend. She's like, oh my god, but I'm just gonna shake into the fella over there with the hella good hair. Won't you come on over, baby? We can shake, shake, shake. Fella. A fella or fellow is a guy. Hella is a slang word that's mainly used in California by young people to emphasize how good something is. So, the fella with the hella good hair is the guy with the extremely nice hair. Example, the party was hella crazy. Hella is the short version of hell of a, as used in a sentence like, that was a hell of a game. However, hella needs to be used with an adjective. We couldn't say that was a hella game but we could say that was a hella close game. Fantastic work today. Be sure to listen to that song again and again and sing along so that you can master all of that new pronunciation and the expressions. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of our new lessons. Also, check out that free three-part mini course I told you about. Check out this other lesson teaching you with Taylor Swift. And finally, check out this other lesson that I think you'll really enjoy. Now it's time to go be on the classroom and live your English. Aw yeah!